Hey guys, welcome back, high level listeners. Today we're diving into an entertaining and everyday topic watching TV. So if you want to learn some new high level vocabulary to talk about your favorite TV shows, binge watching, and more in commonly spoken English, and you want to chat more in depth about different ways that we watch TV nowadays, favorite genres, and the role TV plays in our daily lives as well, we've got a great episode for you today. Yes, I think we do. Hi, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us here at High Level Listening. This is our YouTube channel where we give you side-by-side -side American and British English with me, Mark from the UK, and Kat from the US. So we're back with another episode, and it's another one that you voted on and you chose in our community. We're talking about spending time in front of the TV or in front of the telly, if you're from the UK. So we'll be chatting about how much TV you watch day to day with lots of authentic, naturally spoken vocabulary as well. So we definitely want you to feel comfortable and confident when you're learning, understanding, and listening to our podcast episodes. So here's what we do in each episode. We have two scripts for you. I will give my perspective and my experience in American English, and Mark will share his in British English. Then, as always, after our scripts, we'll go back to the start and we'll go through the script line by line, giving you deeper explanations of our favorite vocabulary and phrases so you can enjoy using this new vocabulary easily and confidently. So let's get started with the scripts. I'll ask Kat the main question. Do you watch a lot of TV? Yeah, I would definitely say so. Uh, these days, with all the streaming services available, it's so tempting to just binge watch a whole season in one go. I'm really into crime thrillers and documentaries. They're so addictive, and I can't help but watch episode after episode. Actually, uh, there is this new show that I'm really invested in. It's so funny, and the episodes are like 30 minutes, so I've blown through the first season already. Even though streaming is my go-to, I actually still keep my cable TV for the news or really popular shows that put out a new episode just each week. Um, in fact, sometimes I often just let the TV run in the background while I'm doing other stuff like cooking or tidying up or just double screening on the couch. Uh, commercial breaks are the worst, but I usually just mute them. Um, I do really love that with streaming. I can just hit play, pause, or rewind if I miss something important. Okay, so Mark, what about you? Do you watch a lot of TV? Oh, for sure. Though not as much actual TV these days, mostly streaming services. Like most people in the UK, I've signed up for at least two or three different streaming platforms. I'll watch any kind of sports documentary or action film. Although currently I'm re-watching one of my favorite comedy shows for the hundredth time. I can easily get through about five or six episodes in one sitting. And whenever a new season of a new series comes out, I'll usually binge through it in one or two days and then feel sad that I have to wait one or two years for more. Uh, I will flick over to real TV to tune in for live sports, but I usually just like to have it on while I'm doing other things around the house. It's nice background noise. At least with streaming, there aren't any annoying adverts and I can turn on subtitles. Okay, so now you've heard both of our scripts and our opinions and experiences about watching TV. Now we'll go through the vocabulary. We'll go back to the start and we'll go line by line, pull out the best vocabulary and expressions for you and give you some more explanations and examples. So back to the start. First of all, Kat, do you watch a lot of TV? Yeah, I would definitely say so. Uh, these days, with all the streaming services available, it's so tempting to just binge watch a whole season in one go. So Mark asked me, do you watch a lot of TV? And this isn't like saying, oh, if you watch a lot of TV, that's bad. It's just uh, maybe we could find something in common, right? Hey, do you, do you watch a lot of TV? Because... Uh, I like watching TV. Maybe this is something in common, right? So do you watch a lot of TV? Yeah, I would definitely say so. I would definitely say so. So if you say so, that means that I would definitely say yes, right? I would definitely say so. Uh, these days, with all the streaming services available, it's so tempting to just binge watch a whole season in one go. 
So when I say these days, I mean kind of modern times, right? Remember when you wanted to watch TV as a kid, you only had a few channels, and now these days, which I really mean in modern times, right? These days with all the streaming services available. With all the streaming services available. A streaming service like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Star+, Plus, things like this, um, with all the streaming services available, it's so tempting to just binge watch a whole season in one go. So all these streaming services or these streaming platforms, you can easily find a TV show and watch every single episode all in one go. So it's so tempting to just keep watching, keep watching. Now, when you binge watch, you don't stop. You keep going. Maybe it's hours and hours and hours of watching. So it's so tempting to just binge watch a whole season in one go. So when we talk about TV shows, okay, for me in the United States, I would call it a TV show. And the TV show is divided into seasons. Each season is divided into episodes. So usually an episode is 30 minutes to an hour long. And then all of those episodes together make up the season. All the seasons make up the show. Sometimes there's only one season anyway. Maybe there's 10 to 20 episodes in one season. So we can watch it all in one go. Just sit down and binge watch something. Uh, what about you, Mark? Uh, I watch a lot of TV. Do you watch a lot of TV? Oh, for sure. Though not so much actual TV these days, mostly streaming services. So, do I watch a lot of TV? Oh, for sure. For sure means definitely. This is a strong yes. Like, do you like pizza? Oh, for sure. Do you watch TV? Oh, for sure. Yes, this is a passionate, happy yes. Oh, for sure. However, I think, as Kat mentioned, there are streaming services these days. So we need some vocabulary to help us differentiate different types of TV. We've got two kinds of TV, I think. There is the traditional, typical TV, which I'm calling actual TV. This is live TV, like the news or sports, that follows a schedule the show is broadcast to everybody in their houses all at the same time, and it finishes at the same time. So if you miss it, you miss it. That's what I'm calling actual TV, normal TV. Um, but it's strange because we don't have a clear phrase or an easy phrase for this. I'm going to use two different terms in this video. There's streaming, like Netflix, HBO, and Disney+, and then actual TV, which is live TV from the satellites on the traditional channels. So I have a TV in my living room, but I'm watching Netflix or HBO or Disney Plus on that TV. I'm not watching actual TV, Is that if that makes sense. So I'm using the streaming services through my TV. So to be honest, I watch a lot of TV but I don't watch a lot of actual TV, like live broadcasts, mostly streaming services. So my TV is connected to the internet. I'm choosing episodes. I'm choosing shows. I can pause and rewind and do all these things. And I can't do that with actual TV. Then later in my script, like most people in the UK, I've signed up for at least two or three different streaming platforms. Streaming services and streaming platforms are the same thing. Netflix is a platform. Netflix is a service. So you can call them services or platforms. And when you pay every month, you sign up for the service or you sign up for the platform. Just like you sign up for the gym or you sign up for a membership. I have signed up for at least two or three different platforms. And I think that's kind of the minimum. I know people with six or seven different memberships. I've only got two or three. That feels like the standard because different shows are on different platforms. 
And uh, yeah, I think that is similar to most people in the UK. Like most people in the UK, I've signed up for at least two or three different platforms. Kat, what kind of TV shows do you like? So I'm really into crime thrillers and documentaries. They're so addictive <laughs> that I can't help but watch episode after episode. Now, crime thrillers. Crime thrillers uh, can be a movie genre or a TV series genre. I actually really prefer the crime thrillers that are about eight episodes because it's kind of my favorite style of they build up the story nice and slow. We call it a slow burn. And then um, finally at the end is kind of all the craziness and you see who 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 did it basically you see who did it, who did it who is guilty of of the crime or something like that so i really am into crime thrillers and documentaries i know that sounds a little like it would be the opposite end but i actually like some of the documentaries that are kind of thrilling as well because then you know i'm also kind of following along with the story and the drama as well so they're so addictive, addictive. Okay, so I'm addicted, ED, and they, the shows, are so addictive, addictive. They're so addictive that I can't help but watch episode after episode. So they're so addictive, I can't stop watching them. I can't help but watch episode after episode. In other words, I can't stop myself. I can't help but watch them. I, I'm sitting here and I'm going to watch them. Episode after episode. So remember, TV show, season, episode. So the episode are the little pieces. Episode after episode. What about you, Mark? What kind of TV shows do you like? I'll watch any kind of sports documentary or action film. So my two favourites, sports documentaries or action films. And I'll watch any kind. So it could be any sport, any actor, or the action film could be set in modern times, ancient times, as long as it's got action, explosions, and some kind of excitement in it, I will watch it. I'll watch any kind of sports documentary or action film. So yes, those are my two favorite genres. If you suggest one or recommend one, I will watch it. If it pops up on the menu on Netflix and it's new and it's a sports documentary, I'm like, ooh, okay, I'll watch that. Uh, obviously, after a while, the Netflix algorithm knows what I like, so it suggests sports documentaries and action films for me. So when I open the program, it suggests these genres because it knows I've watched so many before. And that's that's a great thing for me to find new films and documentaries because I'll watch any kind of sports documentary or action film. So are there any good shows that you're watching at the moment? There's this new show that I'm really invested in. It's so funny. And the episodes are like 30 minutes. I've blown through the first season already. So I just mentioned that I like crime thrillers and documentaries. And you're asking, oh, are there any good shows you're watching? Oh, actually, yes. Um, but it's not a crime thriller and it's not a documentary. There's this new show that I'm really invested in. Now, I always kind of laugh at myself because when I start a new show, sometimes it takes me a, a moment or two, but I start to become invested in the relationships, in the characters, in the people in the show. And that means that I start to care about them. I start to wonder, oh, what are they going to do next? Oh, are they okay? Oh no, what's going to happen? So I'm invested in the characters. I'm invested in the story. I'm invested in the people. We do this with books too. You know, sometimes when you get through a very long book, you kind of feel sad that the characters, you know, are finished and the story is done because you were really invested. You were really invested. So there's this new show that I'm really invested in. Okay, I'm invested in the show, in the characters. It's so funny. And the episodes are like 30 minutes. So 
clearly, I've blown through the first season already. (laughs) So the episodes, remember, are the small pieces. And they're only like 30 minutes, maybe 28, maybe 32. You know, they're, they're like 30 minutes. I've blown through the first season already. So when you blow through something, that means that you go through it very quickly. All right. So I've ah, blown through the first season already. The episodes are so short. They're just so easy to watch. So I've blown through it already. All right, Mark, uh, are there any good shows that you're watching? I'm currently re-watching one of my favorite comedy shows for the hundredth time. (laughs) So I'm actually not watching something new. I'm watching something again. And the word for that is re-watching. You watch it the first time. And if you really enjoy it and you watch it a second time, you re-watch it. So this is very common. I know lots of friends who turn on the streaming service and there's so many choices now that it's almost difficult to choose. So sometimes it's quite comforting or it's relaxing to choose something you've already watched where you know what happens and you know the jokes and it feels almost comforting to see the same characters and the same story. So there are some very popular comedy shows like The Office, for example, which people watch again and again and again almost every year and it's very comforting to them, and I'm the same. I'm currently re-watching one of my favourite comedy shows for the hundredth time. (laughs) I don't remember. I can't remember how many times, uh, but it's a lot. So for the hundredth time, so hundred th time, the hundredth time. Obviously, I'm. It's not really one hundred. I'm exaggerating. But if you want to say that you've done something lots and lots and lots of times, you can say for the hundredth time. Oh, yeah, we visited that restaurant for the hundredth time. Or I watched that movie for the hundredth time and I still love it. So, yes, a lot of people are not watching something new. They're re-watching an old favourite or they're re-watching something they've already seen. So how much time do you think you spend watching TV? I can easily get through five or six episodes in one sitting. And whenever a new season of a new series comes out, I'll usually binge through it in one or two days and then feel sad that I have to wait one or two years for more. So back to the start, I can easily get through five or six episodes. We're going to use the same preposition a few times. Kat said blow through or she's blown through binge through and get through. So when we use phrasal verbs like this, through is watching and consuming a lot of shows or media. If you go through a season, you watch it. Uh, If you binge through it or blow through it, you watch it too. You watch it very quickly all at once. So through is the preposition. You might watch through a series, but I'm saying get through. I can get through. So I can easily get through five or six episodes in one sitting. One sitting is the time when I sit down and watch TV. One sitting can be one hour, so like two episodes, or maybe I stay on the sofa for two or three hours and that's a long sitting. And yeah, with two or three hours, I could get through five or six episodes if they're short. Another British-American difference here, Kat was saying TV show. A TV show can have many seasons. In England, we call them a TV series. So a TV series is the name. So there are some series in the UK that have been going for decades and they have many, many, many seasons. So if there's a new season of a series that comes out, I'll binge through it in one or two days. And uh, yes, sadly, binge watching is almost too fast or too much. And it's kind of a problem because I finish so quickly, I have to wait a long time for new episodes. I think especially nowadays, the quality of these shows is getting so good. They need more time to film it and more time to make it. 
So it's often one or two years between new seasons. And yeah, I binge through it, watch it all in a day, and then I have to wait years for any more. So I almost wish I didn't binge because I, I consume it and it's over too fast. But it's so tempting, like Kat said, to watch episode after episode. Netflix just plays the next episode. It doesn't even ask. It just starts. So it's so easy to binge. Binge is a word we use with food as well. And if you eat too much food, you're binge eating. So binge can have a kind of negative connotation as well. If you think you're watching too much or consuming too much, binge can be kind of negative as well. Anyway, do you watch other types of TV apart from streaming services? Now, Mark mentioned actual TV, uh, which is kind of funny because when we talk about TV, I think of watching TV on my laptop. I think of watching TV on an actual TV. Um, and then also, even though streaming is my go-to, I still keep my cable TV for the news or really popular shows that put out a new episode each week. Now, we call it cable TV, cable TV, which could be actual TV as well because um, I think it's getting more popular, but you can't really watch cable TV on your laptop. Yes, you can watch uh, replays, you can watch some live streaming things, but for the most part, that's your typical TV would be cable. That's when you plug in the the the, the cable. Oh my gosh, I just oh. realized <laughs> that we call it that. <laughs> we plug in the cable into the wall and then we get TV. So we call it TV? cable TV. Wow. See, it's been so long since I've watched cable TV. <laughs> so I still keep my cable TV for the news or really popular shows that put out a new episode each week. So just like Mark binged through a bunch of episodes, he didn't wait, okay? He just got those episodes as fast as possible. But normally, and when I was a kid, you had to wait each week. And each week you would get a brand new episode. And so then by the time the season is finally finished after a few months, maybe we wait like less than a year before the season starts again, which is kind of nice. But if you binge watch it in a few days, yeah, you're going to be waiting a year, if not more, to get more episodes. What about you, Mark? Do you watch other types of TV? I will flick over to real TV to tune in for live sports. So again, as Kat mentioned too, at the beginning I said actual TV. Now I'm saying real TV. So the TV in the living room, the TV on the wall with a remote. And I've got two phrasal verbs as well. I will flick over, flick over. Flick over is uh, using a remote when I push a button and change the channel on the TV. I don't know why we say flick, but flick, I will flick We don't over. really say that. I think we'd probably use like switch over maybe um, or mm -hmm. yeah, change the channel or yeah, switch over, I think maybe. Flick over yeah, sounds very over. funny though. Just flick over, flick over. Flick. Like flick sounds really fast and really quick. It's just boop, a really quick action. So flick over to real TV, which is live and broadcast like the BBC. And I'll do that to tune in for live sports. Tune in is probably quite an old fashioned phrase. I think if you look at really old TVs, they used to have, yeah, little dials. And that's how you change the channel. You tuned the TV like an old radio. You would tune the, the frequency and it would get a different station. But we still keep this phrasal verb, even if you are using a smart TV with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a remote. When you choose a channel because you want to watch something live or you know the schedule and you want to watch it as it's broadcast, you tune in. So I know my favorite program starts at 7.30. I will sit down at 7.28 and tune in. Like, I'm ready. I'm on time. There's something I want to watch. So I will tune in for that. So live sports are obviously live and broadcast on a schedule. So I will sit down before the game and tune in. All right. So 
We've discussed lots of different types of TV. You mentioned cable TV as well. Sometimes do you ever just like the background noise or turn on the TV and not actually watch it? Yeah, in fact, sometimes I often just let the TV run in the background while I'm doing other stuff like cooking or tidying up or just double screening on the couch. So we've got a couple of good vocabulary words here. Sometimes I just let the TV run in the background, run in the background. So if something is in the background, so I'm in the foreground and something is in the background, whatever is in the background is not as important, okay? So my focus is cleaning, tidying up, uh, doing some things around the house, right? And so I'm letting it run in the background or I'm playing it in the background. That means my focus is not on it 100%. It's just playing in the background. It's running in the background while, so at the same time, I'm doing other stuff like cooking or tidying up. Or sometimes I'm just double screening on the couch. Double screening, what a wonderful term. It's kind of come up as we are such modern people, we cannot help ourselves. We have our phone screen, our laptop screen, and the TV screen. So we could be double or triple screening. And that takes a lot of focus, a lot of effort to really have so many screens at one time. <laughs> Just kidding, it doesn't. Um, so I might be on my phone while something is playing in the background. And then I'll have to, oh, oh, I missed a good bit. And I'll have to go back, rewind, okay, play. And then I'm, I'm looking at my phone again. I'm double screening again. I'm thinking, ah, oh, I missed it again. And then I have to go back yeah, once more. What did he say? Yeah. <laughs> I'll never win. I'll never win. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's this mindless scrolling while mindlessly watching TV in the background, in the background. So this is called double screening and we use it like a verb. Okay. So I am double screening right now. So if I'm looking at my laptop and my phone at the same time, I'm double screening. If you can imagine the phone, the laptop and the TV, that would be triple screening, triple screening. <laughs> So what about you, Mark? Uh, do you ever use it kind of as background noise? Yes. In my script, I said, usually I just like to have it on while I'm doing other things around the house. It's nice background noise. So there's two collocations for the TV being on. Kat said, I let the TV run. And I said, I like to have it on. I have it on. I have the TV on. On. So it's like, I want the TV to be on. I want to have it on. You could also use this for a light. Maybe, you know, when I sleep, I like to have the light on. You could say, I like to turn it on or switch it on. That would also be t totally right. But I'm saying, I just like to have it on and making noise and doing something while I'm doing things around the house. Kat mentioned background as well. It's in the background. I think TV is nice background noise. Background noise. Noise is often considered a, a negative thing, like noise from the street or noise from the neighbors. But background noise can be something sort of relaxing. Again, some people like to sleep with background noise. Some people find like white noise or relaxing noise tracks mm -hmm. on YouTube and fall asleep to them. Especially if I'm alone in the house, there's no one else around. It's nice to just hear human voices <laughs> somewhere around and a little bit of background noise so the house doesn't feel as empty, especially in the evenings. I used to do that when I was a kid and my parents went out and I was like alone at home. I would turn on the TV and then just like go upstairs, but the TV would still be on and I would enjoy the background noise. So last question, which do you prefer, streaming or live TV? Well, with live TV or with cable TV, commercial breaks are the worst, but I just mute them usually. I do really love that with streaming, I can just hit play, pause, or rewind if I miss something important. Like if I was double screening and I need to figure out who the murderer is in my crime thriller and I'm, wait, what? I just, 
wait, who is it? And then I can just rewind just a little bit. So commercial breaks, commercial breaks. This is very specific to TV. We are going to stop what we are doing and go to commercial. Now, we do use the word ads when it comes to stuff on TV, um, stuff on streaming, live. Uh, sorry, I don't know what I want to say. One second. Commercials are pretty specific to cable TV, okay? So they will usually stop the programming and go to a commercial break. Think the uh, the uh, Super Bowl, okay? Think about the Super Bowl. I mean, those commercials, uh, some people are paying hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars. These are commercial breaks, okay? So the commercial break is when we stop the TV show, have some commercial time, and then go back. When we talk about ads and things like that, I think more of pop-ups. I think more of something kind of short and more with streaming services or online on my phone and things like that. And commercials, I think of specifically for TV and cable TV. So commercial breaks are the worst, but I just mute them usually. To mute something is to turn off the sound. OK, sometimes I feel like a little old lady sometimes because if there's a fight scene and oh, oh, it's so loud, I'll just mute it for the fight scene and then I'll just turn it back on when they're talking again. So I just yeah, I just hit the mute button. I just mute it because I don't want to hear it. It's too loud. So I do really love that with streaming, I can just hit play, pause or rewind. Or fast forward if I need to, if I think something is boring and I want to see if it gets better. So we have play. That's it playing like normal. Pause. You stop it. Pause. Rewind is go back. And fast forward is to go forward. All right. So play, pause, fast forward, and rewind. Uh, so go forward, go back. Sometimes we we use as well. But yes, this feels like an old VHS tape that I would put into my TV, into the VCR player to go rewind and fast forward. So what do you prefer, Mark, in the end, streaming or live TV? I think streaming wins. In my script, I said, at least with streaming, there aren't any annoying adverts and I can turn on subtitles. I love subtitles. That's yeah. so true. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. There's a British American English difference here. Kat was calling them commercials, the breaks between TV programs. In England, they are adverts. Um, again, the full word adverts is something I associate with TV as well. If I'm okay. watching TV, they're oh, more advert or mute the adverts or, oh, I hate these adverts from this company. But if I'm looking at my phone, I'm scrolling through Instagram, they are ads. Ads. Mm -hmm. Why yeah. skip the yeah. ads? Oh, ugh, there's and so many we call ads them ads lately. as well. Exactly. Right. But yeah, adverts. Um, yes, they're always a bit louder than the regular program. So when it changes, suddenly, yeah, you grab the remote and turn down the volume. And some of them use songs, jingles, characters. I think in the UK they are especially annoying because uh, they try to be funny as well. But I think they're more annoying. Well, that's one of the main benefits of streaming. Most streaming services don't have any adverts. You pay every month, so you don't get adverts. And the broadcast channel doesn't need adverts to make money. And then probably the biggest benefit is I can turn on subtitles. Yeah, it feels like nowadays if I watch actual TV and there are no subtitles, I really have to concentrate because <laughs> I can't read the words at the bottom of the screen. Even, even in our English. native language. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. People talking quickly or like in the crime thrillers that Kat likes to watch, everyone talks in a very like deep, serious voice because they're... Maybe like, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just the if anyone has a slight <laughs> accent, huh? What they say? What they say? What they, what say? they say? <laughs> yeah. Right. Again, yeah, I, uh, just, I just like the. I don't know if it's because the sound on a TV is not 
as clear as talking to a person in real life. I mean, I can hear people when they talk to me, but I can't really hear TV when they're when people are talking on TV. I love subtitles. Mm -hmm. I can't live without them. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, especially if there's music or explosions and it's an action film. Yeah, sometimes I have some of my favorite movies from the 1990s and I watch them again recently with subtitles and I'm like, oh, that's what he said. Is that what he said? Like, I haven't known since like 1999 <laughs> what that guy actually said. And subtitles finally revealed it for me. So yeah, they're still helping me even now. Okay, so there you have it. Some really useful and authentic vocabulary to help you talk about watching TV, whether you watch streaming services, streaming platforms, or good old cable TV. So see if you can use some of the new phrases you learned in this video to practice with us. What was your favorite phrase from this episode? Were there any words or phrases that were new for you? Let us know in the comments below. We read and reply to every single one. Yes, we do. Uh, we love hearing from you. And we, yeah, we definitely want to hear from you about this topic. If you've got a favorite show that you're currently watching and enjoying at the moment, put it in the comments. Uh, don't forget, you can also get a PDF transcript of this episode. It has the full script, every line, every sentence as a downloadable file. If you join as a High Level Listening member through the link below, you can get access to every transcript from every episode on the channel. So again, that's in the link below. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you for our very next video. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.